opened my mind up to do Metallica. I wanted to do Metallica, but oddly enough, I had to choose between Metallica and doing... Um, I'd worked with Bon Jovi and Richie Sambora, and I are great friends, and, and he said, I, gotta do, I want to do a solo album, I want you to do it. And at that point, it was like, you know, should I you know, let down a friend or should I do this band? And, and uh, so I ended up going on a vacation and with my family. My kids and my wife were going through the desert um, by the Grand Canyon, and we're driving along. And there's this person on the side of the road, and there's an Indian on the side of the road in the middle of absolutely nowhere, sitting on the side of the road with a Metallica t-shirt on. And I went, oh my God, that's a sign. About another hundred miles, I stopped for gas. I went into a gas station, paid for the gas, and Metallica were on the radio. And everybody had said they've never been on the radio, so that's when I knew. I phoned my manager. I said, sorry, Richie, I got to do this. I just said to James, I said, you know, if we can get it so, um, you know, one track of vocals can, can sound great, uh, people are going to relate to that. There's, they're going to hear that there's one person singing it. And... Uh, I tried to bring out the person, and, and that's he ended up really liking the sound. And in terms of the relationship with James that I had, I think that really broke the. Album. I would say the whole first part of uh, you know uh, maybe three months of the album, including pre-production, was really really difficult. Uh, I think they were all a bit suspicious of me, and for me to sit down and make comments on their songs, most of them kind of went unnoticed. I'd say something, and they kind of ignored you know, me. Lars's style of of drumming was so foreign but you know uh, with the perspective of time I've actually actually really I really embraced it I think it's it's you know in thinking about it, I just liken him to um, you were asking whether uh, he listens to James in his headphones well um, watching another thing in your uh, another um, uh, episode in your, your series about the Who's Next album uh, talking about Keith Moon. And really, to me, I think that um, Lars is very much like Keith Moon and some of the drummers, some of the great drummers like, you know, Bonham, um, Keith Moon, Ginger Baker, who does, he doesn't just kind of play through things. Uh, there's a certain amount of feel, but Lars, what he does is he actually plays to the music. So to kind of like, you know, normal drummers that have like this bag of tricks that they use and feels and stuff, which of course I appreciate, but it's it's I just find it like I say I embrace Lars's drumming a lot more, and I appreciate it I think more than you know than I ever have because it's original and he plays to the music and the feel of the song. It's not something that he's thought out. What we did is we we just we tried to expand every sound uh, to the max. We you know we tried to get the the guitars as big as possible and the drums as big as possible, the bass as big as possible. You know big and weighty there is a real human quality to the album and and to me i think with with the songs and the vocals especially i think james on this album take took a huge leap in terms of getting what he was trying to say across i think the album stands as being a very personal album and and people could just feel you know you could there's just a sense of a real band playing there and even though it was kind of constructed in some ways bit by bit, uh, just the general feel of it is, is one of, a, of, of uh, humans playing it. And what I always try and do is really try and bring out the, per the personalities in the band and, and make, you know, make records that people love to hear.